I'm here getting ready to pull the axles out of this 190E and um, can't, why am I losing it? Why am I losing it? <laughs> well, after a little assistance, Ari was finally able to get the axles out of the 190E. He did have a problem with a couple of bolts. And if you look at the head of this one, it was really rounded out. And he had a tough time. So once again, if you haven't seen the other video on axle removal that we've done, when you go after these bolts, you want to make sure very first thing that you thoroughly clean out any grease and crud that's down in the head because you want that star, that 12 point star bit to fit down in there tight. That was really the reason why he rounded out the inside of this bolt. But once the axles are out, usually there are two reasons why you want to remove the axles. One is to, to replace them. The other might be to change the differential or the rear end assembly in your car. But there's another reason, and that's to inspect them. It's, you know, as, as try as you might, you really cannot completely inspect these axles when they're in the car unless you have a lot of experience on loading the suspension. Because, uh, you know, they may be tight in one position and they may not be tight in another position. And the key is for you to get it in a position where it normally rides with, you know, the car's weight on the suspension and then check for both side to side and lateral play in the spider joint. So I'm going to show you what a spider joint looks like down inside. And then I'll just show you a couple of tips on how I'm going to test this axle out of the 190E. I removed the boot so you can actually look down into that joint and see how it works. Notice that there's a, some big, big ball bearings down in there. And it's designed to go in and out like this. And it's also designed to rotate like this. So what happens when those ball bearings wear and the, the spider joint hubs wear, then you're going to get some play and even noise in the axle. Okay, now I'm going to show you how that I test these axles on the bench. And you'll understand why it's hard to do this within the car. There's two things you're looking for. Um, you're going to look first and see if there's any play in the joint. And then secondly, you're going to look to see if there's any binding. So I'm going to begin by showing you the binding test. I'm going to pull, notice I can push it in and pull it out. I'm going to pull it all the way out and I'm going to rotate it. Notice how I'm rotating it in a circular motion. If I feel binding or notchiness, or if it's jamming up, that is a bad sign. Now I'm going to push it all the way in, collapse it, and do the same rotation like this. It feels very smooth. I'm not feeling any binding or any notchiness in the joint. Now, the next test is to go for the, to see if there's any play. And what you want to do is, is take this end of the, the hub here and this end of the side of the axle and see if you can get it to move internally like this, laterally. But you want to be in the center position where the axle normally rides. You don't want to be all the way in, you don't want to be all the way out, you want to be kind of in the center. And you might even be able to feel it'll get a little bit, little bit loose when you get into that center sweet spot, if I could call it that. And once you're there, then take a hold of both ends and try to rock back and forth like this. Okay? If you feel any play or any little clunking noise in there, then the axle needs to re be replaced. Yeah, you, you might be able to use it. But I tell you, you're just asking for it. Those are the tests you want to do with the axle out of the car and on the bench. Your options for replacement are good used, rebuilt, or brand new. I mentioned earlier in this video that you really can't test these axles while they're in the car. Well, there are some clues, okay? I'm not going to say this is a pass-fail test, but there are some clues. One is if you're making sharp turns in the car, and you hear a clunking noise in the back, that's probably the axle. Because when you make those sharp, sharp turns, it puts strain on one of the axles and you may pick up the clunking if those joints are worn out. Other than that, you know, strange noises from the rear end, um, it's hard to tell. It could be hub bearings, it could be some differential bearings, but clunking in a turn is usually a sign that your axles uh, may be wearing out. Now, if you find you have axle problems, we have a couple of solutions. 
If your axles pass the test and your boots are cracked, then we have kits that will allow you to replace just the boots. But if you, you know, if you're if you're picking up any play or tightness or notchiness in the in the axles, don't don't replace the boots. It's not worth it. And we do have new axles for the uh, 123 chassis and the older 114 and 115 chassis. But that's about all we we can supply. We do have some good used uh, W126 axles on our website from time to time. So any of those axle resources you need, just uh, follow the links in the description below and it will take you right to those on my website.